think of all the forms of leverage, the best one in modern society, and people are going to this is glib, this is overused, and this is why I tell people, learn to code. We have this idea that in the future, there's going to be these robots, and they're going to be doing everything. And that may be true, but I would say the majority of the robot revolution has already happened. The robots are already here, and there are way more robots than there are humans. It's just that we pack them in data centers for heat and efficiency reasons. Put them in servers, they're inside the computers, all the circuits, the robot mind inside that's doing all the work. And so every great software developer, for example, now has an army of robots working for him at nighttime while he or she sleeps. The robot army is already here. The robot revolution has already happened. The robot army is already here. The robot revolution has already happened. The robot army is already here. The robot revolution has already happened. The robot army is already here. The robot revolution has already happened. About halfway through it, we're just adding in much more of the hardware component these days. As we get more familiar, we get more comfortable with the idea of autonomous vehicles and autonomous airplanes and autonomous ships and autonomous trucks and delivery bots and Boston Dynamics and robots and all that. But robots who are doing web searching for you are already here. Cleaning up your video and audio are already here. Answering customer service queries that you would have had to call a human for are already here. An army of robots is already here. It's very cheaply available. The bottleneck is just figuring out intelligent and interesting things to do to them. So the robot army is already here. The robot revolution has already happened. The robot army is already here. The robot revolution has already happened. The robot army is already here. The robot revolution has already happened. The robot army is already here. this army of robots around. Just the commands have to be issued in the language that they understand. So these robots aren't very smart. They have to be told very precisely what to do and how to do it. So coding is such a great superpower. <laughs> now you can speak the language of the robot army and you can tell them what to do. Now you can speak the language of the robot army and you can tell them what to do. Now you can speak the language of the robot army and you can tell them what to do. Now you can speak the language of the robot army and you can tell them what to do. The robot army is already here. The robot revolution has already happened. The robot army is already here. The robot revolution has already happened. The robot army is already here. The robot revolution Why is that painting worth so much? And the answer
answer to that is, well, we don't really know. They're sacred objects in some sense. And we gaze at them in ignorance and wonder. And the reason for that is that the unknown shines through them at us and in partially articulated form. Well, that's the role of art. And that's the role of artists. Well, that's the role of art. And that's the role of artists. Real artists are contending with the unknown, right? And they're possessed by it. They have a personality trait, openness, that makes them do that. They can't even help it. it. Makes them do that. They can't even help it. The worst thing for creative people is to not be creative because they just die. So one of the things I would say is buy a damn piece of art, you know? Find one that really speaks to you and look out if you do it. If it's a real piece of art because you'll also get a little introduction to the artist and then that'll seep into your life. And that'll change things like mad. But it's really, it's unbelievably worth it because it it opens your eyes to the domain of the transcendent. That's the right way of thinking about it. A real piece of art is a window into the transcendent. That's what it is in the absence of the sublime. You can see that integral to our culture is the idea that beauty is one pathway towards God. And it's saying, if you can't find another pathway, then why don't you use beauty? I'm sure most of you do that with music. Because music is the one thing that modern people can't be cynical about. Thank God for that. And so we need to understand the role of art and literature and, and stop thinking about it as an option. It's not an option. It's not an option. What is it said? Man does not live by bread alone. That's exactly right. We live by beauty. We live by literature. We live by art. And literally, not metaphorically. We cannot live without it. Because life is too dismal and, and, and tragic in the absence of the sublime. Well, that's the role of art. And that's the role of artists. Well, that's the role of art. And that's the role of artists. Real artists are contending with the unknown, right? And they're possessed by it. They have a personality trait, openness, that makes them do that. They can't even help it. Makes them do that. They can't even help it. So, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I hope that you find these programs that we're developing useful and practical and that they help yourselves together and lead productive and meaningful and high quality lives with the least amount of tragedy and suffering possible. That would be really good. So, thanks very much. Uh, Bye-bye. just wanted to add that you will need to apply for a Twitter developer account uh, in order to have it do the Twitter posts. That is a thing. But, I mean, to get your keys and stuff, it's literally the same process as all the rest. You just apply for uh, the account, and then you you, you create the, the top one. It'll give you all of that information you need.